Firstly, this is one where I have one phrasal verb and I have the opposite. For example, put in and take out. So put in means to insert something, okay? Put in. And to take out means to remove, okay? To remove something from inside something else. Like we can see in this picture, if you don't like blood today, by the way, maybe come back later. <laughs> so we've got Marta put the needle in to take some blood. So she put the needle in to the skin to take some blood. But the patient became agitated. So they became a little bit nervous. Okay, it's normal. If you don't like needles, it can be a bit agitating for you. And tried to take it out. So the patient tried to remove the needle. Okay, Marta put it in and the patient tried to take it out. Okay, which is not wise. That's not a good thing to do. Next one, we have put on and the opposite to take off. So put on means to place something on a surface. So I could say, for example, I put my mug on the table. Okay, but in a medical context, you may want to use it for applying bandages, um, plasters. Now you see I've used the word plaster. Oh, trying to highlight it. There we go. I've used the word plaster, but you may hear some North American speakers using the word band-aid. Okay, band-aid and plaster mean the same thing, but plaster is British. So put on to place something on a surface. Take off to remove something from a surface. Surface, sorry. Joe put a plaster on the child's cut. Joe put a plaster on the child's cut. He told the child not to take it off until the cut had stopped bleeding. So Joe placed the plaster on the child. So a plaster are these little things here you see on this bear. These are plasters, the orange parts. The white parts would be called bandages, okay? So yeah, he told the child, don't take it off, don't remove it. If he did, it would hurt. <laughs> so the next one, how are we doing in the comments? Someone said that, that they're going to faint during this live. <laughs> Please don't. Actually, I have a phrasal verb for to faint in this live. It's a bit later, so you'll have to wait for it. But I have a phrasal verb meaning to faint. Uh, agitated means nervous. Yes, it can mean nervous. It's when you're, mm, yeah, nervous, you're nervous. Yeah, we'll go with nervous. Okay, so the next ones, to lift up and to put down. So to lift up means to raise something, so it's at a higher position. And to lower something is to put it on a surface, okay? So for example, the nurse asked me to lift up my arm so he could put on my cuff. The cuff is this thing here, okay, which you use to check blood pressure, for example. So this part here is the cuff. You put that on the arm, okay? So you lift up your arm, you put on the cuff, another phrasal verb. Then I put my arm on the table while he took my blood pressure, okay? So he put his arm on the table or she looks like a woman's hand <laughs> next one sit down and sit up so to sit up means when you sit very straight like this very up and straight you're not like this okay imagine if I did the live like this <laughs> okay so you sit up to so, uh, to sit down means to just sit sit on a surface, okay? I'm sitting down on this chair right now. Dr. Smith asked the patient to sit down and sit up straight so she could listen to his heartbeat. 
So Dr. Smith asked the patient, sit down, sit down, and sit up straight, not like this, but sit up, okay? So she could listen to his heartbeat. So his heartbeat, you would use your stethoscope, you would use this, put it on the chest and you would listen to the heartbeat, okay? It's a bit difficult to do if you're like this. <laughs> so the next one, to turn around. This means to move your body or part of your body in the opposite direction to where it is facing now. So for example, if I turn around now, that means I am turning like that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's to turn around. Or I can just turn my head around, turn my head like this around, turn it around. So I'm moving something in the opposite direction. For example, could you please turn around so I can check your back wound? So they're asking the patient, they're looking at them, can you turn around so I can see your back wound? If you're not sure what a wound is, it's basically um, a cut of some kind, normally quite a big cut. So yeah, help up. Now you can just use help, like would you like me to help you? But this means something different, okay? Help is more general. Do you need any help with anything? Help up is to assist someone with standing or sitting in an upright position. So imagine if a person is laid in bed, okay, and this person says, nurse, I want to eat, can you help me up, okay? This person is asking to be moved from a reclining position like this, so they are sitting up like this, okay? Remember, sit up, the other phrasal verb, they are sitting up but in bed. Or maybe they could say, nurse, I really need to use the toilet. Can you help me up? Meaning, can you help me get out of bed? Okay, so you would have to judge by the context whether they just want to sit up in bed or whether they want to get out of bed and they need your help. Would you like me to help you up? Okay, could mean either, depends on the situation. The next one, now someone wrote in the comments that they were going to faint during this live if they saw blood. So instead of saying to faint, you could use pass out or blackout, okay? So I could say, Lee passed out in the corridors at work, meaning Lee fainted. You could also use it to mean to become unconscious, which is basically to faint in most cases. Now, if you come round, this means when you become conscious again. This is only when you pass out, so it's only when you faint and then you recover. Or maybe you've had an operation, you've been under anaesthetic and you are recovering from that anaesthetic, it's wearing off, another phrasal verb, meaning it's going away, okay? It's um, it's not working anymore because time has passed, so it becomes less effective. So come round means to become less, to become conscious, not become less conscious, become conscious. For example, Lee passed out in the corridors at work. Luckily, he came round about five minutes later. So here, this doesn't mean that he came round, he came to my house five minutes later. No, no, different meaning here. It means that he passed out, then he became conscious again five minutes later, okay? Different meaning here. How are we doing in the comments? Um, she love has asked about pass out. Yeah, we've talked about this now, so that's good. Um, cuff and cough sound the same. Ah, they do sound similar, don't they? So the one that I mentioned before, let's just go back a second to this one. This here is, your, is the cough, cough, cough. And then the <coughs> is cough, cough, cough. Different vowel placement. Cuff, cough, 
cuff, cough. So be careful with that one. That's a really good question. Is there any difference between wound, ill and sick? There is no difference between ill and sick, but wound is some kind of opening in the skin, okay? Where you maybe have a cut or some, you could say, uh, raw skin <laughs> is exposed. So, you know, it, it's typically used for cuts as a wound. I wouldn't say, oh, I feel wound. <laughs> no, I'd say I feel sick or I feel ill. But a wound is some kind of cut, normally a big one. And speaking of cuts, our next phrasal verb is cut out. So we have cut out meaning to remove something from inside something else by cutting it. Okay, so I could say the doctor had to cut out the remaining pieces of glass. Okay, so maybe there were pieces of glass under the skin and the person, uh, the doctor, the surgeon, whoever, had to cut the skin more to take out that glass. They had to cut out the, the, the glass. Now, another meaning of cut out means to remove something from your diet. And by diet, I mean the things that you eat, okay? So I could say it's common knowledge that diabetics must cut out sugar, meaning they must remove sugar from their diet, otherwise they'll become sick. So in this case, you've got cut out, meaning to remove something by cutting, making some kind of incision, and then cut out in another sense can be to remove something from your diet. The next one is go up and go down, meaning to decrease and increase. So I could say the patient's blood pressure is going down, meaning it's decreasing rapidly. Rapidly just means very fast, very quick. We must get it to go up, to increase again quickly. The patient's blood pressure is going down rapidly. We must get it to go up again quickly. To give up. This is a kind of sad phrasal verb. Um, but it basically means when you stop trying to do something. So in this case, we've got Marjorie's health seems to be deteriorating. So to deteriorate means not the opposite of improve. Basically, it's getting worse. Seems to be deteriorating. I hope that she's not giving up on life. So in this case, the person say, I hope that she is, she has not stopped trying to live <laughs> and not stopped trying to fight to live. Okay, sometimes when you're very sick, you just think, oh, pff, it's my time, you know, it's my time to go. So you start to just deteriorate, you get more and more sick because you're not fighting anymore, you give up. In a more general sense, you could use give up to mean when you stop trying to do anything. So I could say something like, um, I was learning how to draw but I was terrible, so I gave up, yeah? I stopped trying. So it can be used in a general sense as well. This is a nice picture. So we've got to swell up, swell up. So this is to become larger in size, typically due to an infection or being hit. So maybe you get a swollen eye, okay? Maybe someone punches you, you get a swollen eye, or in this case, this poor gentleman has a swollen foot, or I can say his foot has swollen up. Yeah, it started to get bigger because of some kind of impact or an infection or something. So I could say, after falling off his bike, John's foot started to swell up and bruise. Careful with the pronunciation of this. Bruise, not buoy, bruise, but bruise. Now to bruise, you can see here on this man's foot, this area, it's a little bit purple, okay? The same here, it's a bit pink, here it's a bit purple, 
a bit blue, you could say. When the skin starts to go a bit purple or blue or this kind of color, sometimes yellow if it's quite a fresh, uh, not a fresh, uh, an old bruise. Um, yeah, we call it a bruise, okay? A bruise. And it's also the verb to bruise. The next one to fill up. Let me check comments before we move on to that. Ah, someone said that <laughs> they've been watching House. This is good. <laughs> it's good practice. First it was House, now I'm watching The Good Doctor. Fantastic. Many years watching House. I do recommend House. There's another one I recommend as well. Ah, oh, what's it called? Grey's Anatomy. This is also very good. But if you're looking for something kind of less dramatic in a way, like focus more on the medical side, I can recommend some uh, TV shows that we have in the UK related to medical fields. For example, Holby City. Holby City is, sent, is set in a hospital and it's about the life of the doctors and nurses there. And also... Um, Casualty. Casualty is kind of connected to Holby City in a way, okay? You have uh, Holby City and Casualty. They're very, very similar. Um, but Casualty is based on the paramedics. So they go out and see to these emergencies and things. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I recommend that you check these out. They're very popular in the UK. Um, let's see. So the next one, fill up. This means to become full of something, okay? You can use it in the, um, oh, I didn't use it even in the, <laughs> in the, the, the example. I meant to write, uh, we need to drain the lungs of any remaining fluid before they fill up again. I wanted to add that. So before they fill up again, meaning to become full of some liquid or fluid, whatever. The next one, to throw up, means to vomit, okay? The patient began throwing up after taking their medication. So to throw up, to vomit, began throwing up, poor guy. <laughs> to wrap around, this is to put something around something else. So you can see here, we have a bandage, okay? You may also hear it called a dressing, uh, not related to a dress, okay? Like a, a lady's dress, but we call it a dressing. Here we can also call it a bandage. So to wrap around, you could say, Nurse Jones wrapped the bandage around the patient's knee to protect the wound. I put project, but it should be protect, sorry. So to protect the wound, she wrapped the bandage around. So she had a bandage, she put it around the knee. Okay, the knee being this part of the body. And then the last phrasal verb we have for today is another sad one, to pass away, meaning to die. This is a very, I don't want to say nice way of saying to die because there's no nice way to say someone's died. But I mean, if you tell, if you are a nurse and you need to tell the family members that their relative has died, it sounds very direct to say, I'm sorry, but John died. Okay. <laughs> Always John. <laughs> I'm sorry, but John died uh, while in theatre today. You would say, I'm really sorry, but... John passed away today, or you would use something like this. It sounds a little bit softer, a bit nicer, you could say. The nurse had to tell the family that their relative had passed away. So yeah, he had died, but in a less direct, a kind of nicer way. So that's pretty much it. What I'm going to do is just edit the document with all the mistakes in, because I always have mistakes in the documents, and I will uh, save it, put it in the description for you. So if you want to download it and have your own copy, you can have that. Let me have a look at the comments. Make sure people are uh, following and make sure you don't have any questions. 
let's see <laughs> someone's asked if it's the foot of another teacher i remember he did have a bad foot didn't he poor guy uh greetings from argentina hello fill up with petrol too so you say fill you would say fill up with petrol so going back to that phrasal verb again here fill up you can fill something up with petrol i fill up my car with petrol i fill up my mug with coffee in this case i wanted to say that the lungs fill up with fluid but i accidentally missed it but no worries um after he passed away good my cat had passed away three months ago oh i hope that's not true i hope it's just an example but anyway grammatically perfect sentence um emma could you do it for hairdressing ah i thought you meant the dressing as in here <laughs> as in the hairdressing this one i could do in the future that's a good uh topic no good fantastic no one has any other questions so that's it we will finish there i hope you all have a fantastic day don't worry about uh the mistakes in this document i will edit them and put them up uh, later with the correction so you can download it thank you very much for watching and don't forget that tomorrow there will be two more lives for you to watch okay see you soon guys